So, if you don't know me yet and you've never been on one of my lives, then you might be kind of shocked that it's 9.30 or something. <laughs> and I said I was going to try to be on here at 9. <laughs> so, we could blame it on the time change, but let's be real. Because I think that God really wants me to talk about how being spirit-led sometimes means that you have to be very flexible and your life sometimes looks messy and it's sometimes hard and sometimes the world would say things like I'm late, I'm irresponsible, I'm a hot mess and that's okay because it's spirit-led life and it's spirit-led business and that's what I'm here to talk to you guys about tonight. So it's okay if you're organized and on time and all those things that I'm not you can still be spirit led. But if you are a flexible hot mess like me, then you're already on the right track. That's the first thing I've got for you tonight. So, um, I just want to share with you guys a little bit about my story tonight and a little bit about why, um, the Lord told me to do this, um, this series of spirit led, led business trainings. So, um, I actually just left a business training for my business that I do, my doTERRA business, and it was awesome, and I got so filled, and um, it kind of was a last-minute thing, so I had planned to do these every Monday night um, before I even knew about that because God just told me to start sharing a little bit about how I do business, and not just with people in my specific area of business, because I have shared with the people that you know do doTERRA with me and even some other um, network marketing companies and things like that. But this isn't just something for network marketing and this isn't just something for doTERRA. This isn't just something for women. This isn't just something for whatever, right? Like this is, this is how he has designed us to have our lives be. It's being led by him, being led by Holy Spirit and everything and in all um, things. And our business is a huge, huge part of that. So, um, I'll just start out with my story because I didn't even realize that I was supposed to be, you know, uh, in business as a, as a Christian. Like I really felt my highest calling was to be a wife and a mother. And I'm not going to say that it's not, it's not your highest calling cause it still is. But I really believe that for a lot of us as Christians, we think that, you know, men often think they have to be in ministry or be like a pastor to be making a difference, to be pleasing God. And women often think we have to be a really good submissive wife and a really amazing um, mother, right? To be pleasing to the Lord as a Christian. And I learned that I can still be a good wife and a good mother and also be an amazing businesswoman because that's actually something else that he has destined us to do. And I believe that we each have different um, roles, like in the body of Christ, like it talks about, right? He has different different assignments for each of us. So I'm I'm not gonna say everybody's supposed to be in business, yeah. Different different objects, right? I'm a knuckle. <laughs> You're a knuckle. We're all different body parts, right? Like he says, in the body of Christ, we're all different body parts. We all have different assignments. We all have different giftings, and that's a different um, training I'm gonna do just about being you and who he designed you to be. So I'm not necessarily going to say everybody's designed to be in the marketplace, but for those of you who are, I hope that you get to watch this and you get to take something away from this. Um, I would say if you are in the marketplace right now in any kind of business, whether you work for yourself, you work for someone else, whatever, you're doing business, then right now he has a plan for you to be spirit led in that, right? He has um, a destiny for you. He has some really good things for you. And he has a plan if you will follow it. And if you're not, but maybe you have a desire in your heart to start your own business or just to be in business in some way, then this is also for you, right? Because before you even start your business is the best time to get on the same page with God and ask him what his vision for your business is. So that's pretty much what I did um, without 100% realizing it. When I started my business, I was not looking to start a business, but I had a deep desire in my heart to do something more. Like I said, I knew that I was supposed to be a wife and I knew I was supposed to be a mom and I felt 
fulfilled doing that and I felt it was my highest calling, but there was a piece of me that knew there was something more I was supposed to be doing. Something more and I didn't know what. I just knew something more. I knew like he had gifted me with things like communication. Like I love this. I love talking in front of people. I love going live. I love encouraging people and helping people and I've always enjoyed being um, like I guess a leader really, you know, like part of a team. But being able to lead people, you know, and help people in whatever way. And so I knew, yes, I could do all those things as a mom and a wife, but that it would be selfish of me not to go and do those things for other people and with other people as well, right? So I um, I started using um, doTERRA essential oils almost six years ago. No, more than six years ago. My son's almost six. So about six and a half years ago, I had to think about it. It's been a while. And um, just like anything else I'd used, I had never really done network marketing, so I had no idea about network marketing. I had wanted to be in business for myself, so I had started some things that I also liked, you know, for myself. Like, I was um, raising some animals, we had some horses and some cows and some goats, and I was gardening and homesteading, and that was something I loved, but it wasn't really creating income. So I was enjoying it, and it was something that, for some people, that definitely creates income, but for me, it really wasn't an income stream yet, and so I kind of had the idea and the desire in my heart that I wanted to be in business, maybe, and that was a way to use my giftings, but I didn't know how yet. I didn't know the vehicle, and then my husband, um, which I just shared about yesterday, um, or today, actually, I shared about our story about him having a deep desire to be a preacher, but not really in a church to get to travel and do ministry, right? He had that deep desire. And so we had all these things, but we weren't really sure how, what was the vehicle, right? What was the tool? And that is when God brought doTERRA into my life. And we started sharing it because just like we would share where we go out to eat or we would share, you know, whatever we would refer someone that had helped us. And we started sharing it just like that, just that simply and that naturally without even realizing and I will say that's probably the biggest thing I've learned about being spirit-led is that I can't really teach you how to be spirit-led because it's just doing life and learning how to follow your own instincts. Some people would call it like follow your gut, follow your heart, you know, like what are the instincts you have? What are you drawn to? But to me, all those things mean Holy Spirit, mean God, because I know He is the leader. He is the teacher of my life. He, he is the one, right, guiding and all of those things are changed by him because he has power over everything and I'm so thankful that he does um, and I have given him that right like I've surrendered and submitted my life to him and so I know that when I have an instinct it's from him so I know it's a good one and I can trust it so as we started sharing just because it was easy and it came natural it was spirit-led without us realizing and then when the business opportunity was really presented to me with this business I started to realize maybe this is it because I get to be around other women. I get to be around other moms. I get to be around other Christians and people that have this, you know, passion for changing the world, for helping people, for missions all over the world. Like it was so many things I was very passionate about. So it, it seemed so clear to me that it was God that he had brought this into my life. So then what we did was then we opened it up to him and truly said, okay, Lord, we see this is from you. It started, you've done some really cool things without us even realizing it, blessed it, you know, started a small income stream from it. And then when we gave it to him, we saw huge fruit. And so that's what I want to encourage you guys to, whether you don't even know the business yet, or you kind of might have an idea, or you have some kind of desire in your heart, um, that's the perfect time to give it to him and to just say, so my husband and I got together and we both are pretty big dreamers and we like to write things down. We like to um, create them. What we call it is we craft a prayer. Like we create a prayer over our business, over our life, over whatever season we're in. And then it's something like that we can pray over and over again and we pretty much end up prophesying to ourselves, which is something that is biblical, right? God gives us a word, a download right from him. You don't have to be some prophet, some special person to hear from the Lord. Anyone can. I'm going to talk about that in the next training. So I'm trying not to get into that, but you can hear from God and he can give you this download about your business, about your life, about whatever it is. And basically we just get together and we pray and we ask God, okay, what is it that you're speaking to us about this business? Because we now see it's from you. We know Lord, it's you and that you have a hand in this. You want to bless this. 
We want to know what you want to do with this because I could do lots of things with this and it might even look good, you know, it will never succeed until I give it to you, Lord, right? And that's, that's scripture, you guys, right? If you want to see it succeed, give it to him. Let him lead because we can do a lot of things, but they will never be as good as they'll be when we partner with God. Okay, so we give it to him. We pray. We say, God, what do you want to do with this business? Give us some ideas. And that's when they come, right? The ideas, the thoughts, the downloads is what I call it, you know? And my husband and I got all these ideas about how we're going to do this business, what it's going to look like. Um, my husband's a market major, and so that's one of his things he brought to it was like, okay, who do we want to share with? Who are you already sharing with? Who do you enjoy sharing with? What? Do you, how do you want to do it? Like, And so strategies for business came, which were very spirit-led and they will whether you're strategic and you're a marketing major like my husband or not you'll get strategies I still constantly get ideas and downloads to do with my business every day all day long I get an idea and sometimes it's overwhelming because I have so many ideas I feel like I can't do them all okay but that's what it means to be spirit-led is to go okay God which one do you want me to do and which one do you want me to do first and how and I try not to let any of those go because I think Often the world will say like, oh, it's almost like you're ADD. And I've, uh, that's something people have told me sometimes. It's like, okay, Kelsey, you're all over the place. You have so many ideas. And I'm an activator. Like that's one of my strengths where I just, as soon as I have the idea, I want to do it. And so it's really messy sometimes because I'm not prepared <laughs> and I don't know what the heck I'm doing, but I just jump in and I say, God, all right, you told me this, let's go. So I've learned to kind of like slow down and go, okay, now I have so many ideas, but which one first or which way first and remember that it's a constant communication with him right so as we got all these strategies and downloads and stuff and we crafted this prayer then what we do is we continue to pray that over our business and it started with something like a goal okay and so they start out usually small when they come from us and they start out pretty big and scary sometimes when they come from God and so Mine was like, pay for a house cleaner because I hate cleaning house and it would just be awesome to have a little bit extra money, right? And that's fine and that's great and God was in that. But something really cool somebody told me even just tonight that I'm supposed to share on here is that the little dreams are actually really selfish, right? We, like, I sometimes felt like the little dreams were not selfish. Like, they were for me, yes, but like... If I have a big dream, it almost feels like that should be more selfish. But actually, the little dreams are more selfish because they're about you and what you can do to make yourself better. And usually when you get a big dream from God, yes, there's pieces of you in it. But there's going to be so much more of other people and so many more other people you get to touch and help. And such a bigger difference you get to make, which is what God's all about, right? It's about community and about how we are helping each other and what purpose he put us here for, right? So... He gave us some big dreams that were like um, being, you know, able to travel. And I, I talked about that today in my post, you know, about how that was a dream that he gave to us a long time ago before we ever saw a vehicle for it. But then he reminded us that that was a dream. And he reminded us that that was a dream when we were crafting a prayer for our business. And it became clear to us that this was a vehicle he gave us to take us somewhere that's ministry and so then it was like oh okay so the marketplace the money provides for the ministry right that's what he does and then the money and whatever the marketplace he's doing for you also provides for his people because he knew okay the more I give give y'all the more you'll give right so we were able to dream really big and and set big goals like getting out of debt and we had like sixty thousand dollars of debt y'all and we um we were like, we were ready to get out of debt. That sounded awesome, right? And then we had big dreams about um, really getting to sow into a, a ministry that was that God also placed on our heart. We had a dream of um, helping save girls and boys out of sex trafficking, and we still do that, and we're able to partner monthly now, but we had some big initial goals. So he, he may give you some dreams that seem like, they seem crazy, right? Like to us, he the first one he gave us was to raise $2,500 which at the time that was literally what we were making in a month, our, our family, that's what we were making in a month. So like that was a big thing to be like, let's have an extra 2,500, right? So 
and we were saying, God, we'll partner with you in this extra 2,500 and that will go and save some girls in Nepal, right? And then it became bigger, like my husband wants to go to Nepal and see these girls and make a difference and he was able to do that. And so these things though, that I, that were put on our heart, it, some of them took years, which honestly in the grand scheme of things now seems really fast seems fast because he got us out of debt and he took us to be able to travel all over the world and um, save girls out of sex trafficking and my husband to go to Nepal and all of that in less than three years from when we started crafting this prayer so pretty crazy right if you if you get that download from God you partner with him you agree to him and you say I'll be faithful with this and and then you pray it over yourself you you tell yourself this is going to happen then like when you speak it out there's so much power in the spoken word right that's why the bible says that the power of life and death is on your tongue so be speaking life over yourself and your business right and and when you're speaking something that holy spirit give you then <laughs> it, sometimes it doesn't make sense right like it, we don't know what it means at that time but when we know it's from him i just speak it out and i believe it and we pray it together and then we've just seen so much fruit come from that and it's been it's been crazy so all of that like I said was like six and a half years ago now and I have never thought that I wanted to like be a business coach or life coach or anything like that I just wanted to help people in my business and I'm starting to try to be more open to God saying hey I want you to help other people it's not just for your particular business these are just things that can help anybody because we have to be spirit-led in everything. We have to be spirit-led as, as mothers, right? Like that's a huge part of my ministry and my heart. And something I'm passionate about is helping mothers be spirit-led with our kids and with teaching them and all the things. Like motherhood's scary and overwhelming. But we have to not forget that God wants us to be in the marketplace to make money. He created money. He can create more money for us. And... I think a lot of the time we think, okay, God's in church or even God's in our family. He's in this, but we're kind of scared to like let him in our finances. And some people are scared because they think, oh, he's going to just want me to give more. But what's so cool, he's going to give you more so that you can give more, right? You're going to become more blessed so you can be a blessing. So, so when we learned that like God wanted us, wanted to be a partner with us in our business and be spirit led in our business it just took off and it, it was so, it was, it, the change was huge. Right. And I have had times, like, it's not like all I ever do is be spirit led. I still have times where I try to do my business out of my strength and I try to just do the things that I know I'm supposed to do and do them without God. Like there's times that I say, okay, Lord, I'm just going to do this. I know how to do this. I can get it done. I can, and that's part of my personality. And he has created me to be very strong-willed. And there's good things in that. But there's times that I step away from him because I say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this done. And I've gone back and heard myself say, I'm going to make this happen. Right? When I have a big goal about something. And my heart can be right to start with. Like, I want to do this and help this person and save this person and whatever. But if I step away from him and I start leading doesn't happen as well as it could have I promise I can I can I can see that now right like so I can see the seasons of being spirit led and so like I asked him to name our business and this was before I even really realized we were being spirit led like I said I asked him to name our business and when I first named my business I named it in myself and my strengths and without God and that was fine and I'm he did bless it but I named my business the Healthy Homestead because I was wanting to be about health and I was homesteading. Those are those are great things. And then when we started really praying over this crafted prayer that, that we created and, and saying, Lord, we want more. We want to really use this business for the kingdom and see what you can do with it, Lord. I felt him say, you have to rebrand. And so I just think about like so many people that are like starting a business or thinking about a business or you're even in the beginning of it. You haven't even branded yourself yet, like the name of it let God name it, right? We let God name our kids. I pray about every name of my kids and what their names mean. And I've let God name all my animals even pretty much, but I didn't let God name my business. How scary is that, right? Like that's a huge part of my life. And so when I went back and I rebranded my business, it was clear as day that he said, Kelsey, your business is supposed to be called our spirit led life. 
because I'm going to teach you how to be spirit led in your business. And it's not even just about health and it's not just about animals. It's not just about kids and moms and babies and oils and whatever. It's about all of that. It's about life. And so a lot of business coaches will tell you, be really specific. You know, you want to just be about the one thing you're about. But God told me, be about spirit led life and I will bless it. And he has. He has so blessed it. And that, that spirit-led life was able to take us all over the world. And we were able to do business and do ministry, right? Because your business is your ministry, right? It is. You don't have to be in ministry to be ministering to people. The people he brings to you to do business with are the ones you're supposed to minister to. And when he gives you influence over anybody... Those are the people you're supposed to be ministering to. And that doesn't mean that I had to thump them over the head with the Bible. That doesn't even mean I had to necessarily talk to them about Jesus. That was hard for me. Because I thought, okay, I'm supposed to just at least talk to them about Jesus. I was supposed to just be the example. I was supposed to be a light, right? And then there was places we went that were dark. That were dark. And I felt him even say, you don't have to say my name here, Kelsey. It's okay. You just be you and they're going to feel it. They're going to feel it. And I've had people say to me after being at things like that, like we just felt something good, something light, something oozing off of you. And I was like, yeah, it's Holy Spirit, right? That's what it is. That's what he calls us to be. And honestly, most of the time, if you're a parent, you can probably attest to this. People don't really do what we say. Kids never do what we say. Mine don't. But they do what we do. They see what we do. My kids, I tell them, go pray, go worship. And they're like, nah. But then when I do, when they see me on my knees and sobbing before the Lord and they see Holy Spirit overcome me, they're like, that's cool. And I see them do it. And then I see them, you know, get in conflict and go, okay, when, when mom's in conflict, she might cry and she might break down, but she goes to the Lord. And that's what it's about, right? But it's not just having to only see the Lord or only talk to him on Sunday. It's about literally knowing that he's with me always, always, right? I heard someone just say today, like, oh, when we pray and there's two or more of us together, yeah, that's in the Bible, but he's always in us. Once you're born again, Holy Spirit indwells in your body. That means he's here always. I don't have to do any special things, say any special prayer. There's no religion to Jesus, y'all. And so he's with me and every single thing I do because he's in me is spirit led then, right? There's times that I can go, okay, that was me. And I can be aware of myself making a choice that was me. But you know how I know it's him? It feels good. It feels like bigger than me. And it feels like it was a thought or an instinct that came, right? As soon as I start doing something, he takes our, he takes our belief and he mixes it with action and it becomes something amazing. So I want to give you guys a couple of books that have really helped me if you guys are into reading. So Danny Johnson, I love her. She is an amazing, amazing businesswoman. Um, and she has done all kinds of businesses, starting with network marketing like I have. And then she's also an amazing spirit-filled um, believer. She has a book called Spirit-Led Success. I'm going to put that in here um, on the title so you guys can have it too. Um, Spirit-Led Success by Danny Johnson. It's D-A-N-I, Danny. And I follow her on Facebook. She does um, trainings and stuff, all kinds of stuff. Um, you can go on her website. You can get all kinds of free things from her. She is amazing. But the Spirit-Led Success book blew my mind and changed my relationship with the Lord, changed the way that I did everything in life because of just so many truths that it brought about being spirit led in your business and about God wanting to bless us in our business. And one of the principles that she says in there that really stuck out to me that I still take with me is that, you know, we think that, okay, we have to be a pastor to be doing ministry, to be pleasing God, or we have to be like sharing Jesus with people to be pleasing God, but we have to have influence. We can't just go chase people down, knock on their doors and say, Jesus, I mean, we can but we have to have influence. And influence comes from, what does influence come from? Things that are not necessarily always godly things, right? Like people look at successful people, people with money, people with power, and I would say they have influence, right? So if you look in the Bible, you'll see there was prophets, but the prophets did not necessarily have influence, right? The prophets went to the kings. And they said, here's a word from the Lord. You need to tell the people. It was the kings that had influence. It was the kings that were able to change people, right? And whenever God needed something done, he changed the heart of the king, 
right? He didn't have to change the heart of the prophets. And hey, if you're a prophet, that's awesome. But if you're a king, if you're called to be a king in the marketplace, then be one and stop trying to be a prophet or be in ministry and just look at what he's given you right now and use that to minister to people. And so that's something I learned from her book that just blew my mind because I knew I wanted to be in ministry. My husband knew he wanted to be in ministry. We had been in ministry. We had been youth pastors and we had been leaders and we had done all these things and they had, they'd been good, but we hadn't felt like we had reached our full potential for influence until we started ministering through our marketplace, through our business, right? So I really want to encourage y'all to read her book, to get her book, Spirit Led Success. The other book that really, really helped me with this is Jesus CEO. And then there's another one called Jesus Entrepreneur. So like I said, if you're even just in any business, any job, whatever your job is, um, it may not be your passion because you may have something else, a side hustle that's your passion. Your passion is where you want to go because that's the one God's going to bless. You're going to love it and feel good about it. But whatever you're doing, um, Jesus is the CEO of it. Meaning, even if you have a CEO, even if you have a job, Jesus is your real CEO, right? And whatever your passion is, your side hustle, Jesus is your CEO of that. And so that book, Jesus CEO, is by Lori, I can't remember her last name. I'm going to put these in here, okay, in the title of this um, for you guys to look up. But Jesus CEO is another great book. And then her, her second book is Jesus Entrepreneur. For those of you that want to work for yourself, which I think is awesome, and God is really, really on entrepreneurship and blessing businesses right now. Um, Jesus Entrepreneur is an amazing book, too, with some more really good principles and really good things to grab a hold of to help you as you begin this journey to becoming a king in the marketplace, becoming spirit-led in your business. So, I'm sorry this was so last minute, but um, it was God, and He was on it, and it's just a real life example of how I do life and how I do business and how everything I do is just whenever he says go I go whenever he says go live go live even though it's hard sometimes um whoever he says to share with I share with right and how he says to do business is how I do it and like I said that doesn't mean I don't ever mess up and I don't ever do things for me but but knowing that he's leading it I feel so good about it and I see so much more fruit right so I want to hear from you guys um, thank you for tuning in, whoever did tune in live and whoever's going to watch later. And please share this. Um, I'm going to have another one and my husband will be joining me actually for the next three. The next three of these that we'll have will be on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Central on here. And we are going to be talking about some more things and digging deeper into being spirit-led in your business and to help you in particular. But I want to hear from y'all. Comment below and tell me. Tell me about your business. Tell me about... Um, your dream, Tell if you're not in business yet, what you do for business, what you want to do for business, and any prayer requests you have for me that I can pray for you to help brand yourself and start dreaming and start crafting that prayer for your business that you can start praying and prophesying over yourself what God says about you and your business. All right, so I bless you all on that, and I thank you so much for being on here, and I just pray that you guys all took whatever God wanted you to hear from this and whatever he didn't want you to hear, whatever was me. And I just pray you don't remember any of that. And I just bless you on your pursuit of him and your spirit led business. And I will see you guys next Monday. Thank you.